Nice. This is uh, Henry Latham, CEO of Product Mastery, and Rob Ham uh, Hamblin. You can never say your name. You never founder say of Lee. <laughs> founder of Lee. And this is our first sort of more formal product chat. Uh, and today we've got Austin Keeble, also known as John Austin Keeble, I think. Uh, hi, Austin. How's it going? Nice to have you on. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Just give a, if you could give us a little bit of background to like, what you do, where you're based, uh, where you're at currently. Yeah, I'll try to keep it uh, relatively short. Um, originally from the States, obviously, although I haven't lived there in almost a decade. Uh, so I spent a bit of time uh, professionally in northern Italy, uh, near Milan-ish, and uh, jumped over to London for around five years um, and uh, have been in Berlin for the last three years. So I've, I've left a really uh, beautiful collection of kind of people and projects in my wake in those three cities. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm now officially installed in Berlin for the last three years and for the foreseeable future um, as a designer, researcher, and educator. Um, mm -hmm. I guess my tagline is I, I work with robots, uh, but fight for the humans. Um, <laughs> Or I work with robots, but design for the humans. I, I stopped using fight because I was actually afraid that at one point the robots were going to come after me. Um, so I'd say I work with robots and design for humans. I'd say I spend about half my time uh, designing stuff. So, you know, websites, applications, um, and the other half the time uh, bringing what I've learned into the classroom uh, with General Assembly and also with um, like individuals and uh, companies as well. So it's, a, it's, you know, a bit of a mix, um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of my split at the moment. It's around 50% 50, 50 product design, 50% mm -hmm. bringing that into classrooms. No, it's nice. I mean, I've been doing a similar thing. It's, it's nice doing the sort of hands-on side of stuff. So I'm doing like a little bit of consultancy work still, mainly in design actually. Um, and then, yeah, trying, you know, pass on, passing on learnings, I think such a good way to reinforce your own knowledge, isn't it? I, I mean, the spotlight. I, yeah, I think, mindset wise, I think, you know, always a student, sometimes a teacher. And I think the, the, de the delivery, like doing design work and working in technology and the teaching, they both kind of sharpen each other. There's like yeah. a, there's kind of a nice like symbiosis there. So uh, yeah, I, I find it, but it make me each role kind of makes me better at the other one. Um, yeah, yeah. No, like, so, I mean, it, it's crazy looking on the you know, topic of education, I suppose, where, I saw a post on LinkedIn from a guy, I'm actually sort of bringing him in next week to our, our product MBA, but uh, as, a, as a teacher, he, yeah, he posted something about, you know, being taught a sales program by a guy who hasn't worked in sales for 10 years. And it's just, you know, it's so obvious to me that in such a fast moving world, like if you're working in anything vaguely like startup tech, you know, yeah. 10 years time, we're still using, you know, what Photoshop's the only tool for doing sort of interface design, right? So. Right like you're doing completely irrelevant. Like you're so yeah. out of the game, you're even in two years out of the game. So you start yeah, so I, I'm just trying to imagine what the sales guy's recommendation was like from the eighties, like step one, yeah, join a country yeah. club. Step yeah. two, get a large boxy suit. Step three, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're like, uh, it's 2020. Yeah, yeah especially in the tech really. field, things move really quick, so. Yeah, for sure. So talk me through, so you're still working at General Assembly then, just teaching, you mentioned robotics, you're doing that? No, so I work with robots, but I just mean like oh, websites right. and applications. Oh, uh, right, right, right. It's just a tagline, it's, yeah. Uh, no, so I do work with, uh, I work at General Assembly as a design instructor. Um, yeah. I also help them, uh, it's, it, I'm on the product, I'm the chair of the product advisory board, um, I, you know, the, the title makes me blush because it sounds so official, but basically it just means that, um, you know, we help make sure that, you know, what we're teaching is up to date, like across all, you know, yeah. 30 campuses and across all courses. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's just, it's kind of a, a brain trust of instructors that have been there for a while just to make sure that we're on the right track. Um, and then I, I don't have a ton of time to jump into the classroom these days because uh, I have yeah. other work going on, but um, I try to at least teach like one course a quarter. It's either a one week like intensive course or a 10 week part time course. Yeah. Um, I find that like is a good rhythm that keeps me sharp. I like being in the classroom. I, I just really enjoy yeah, it. Uh, so that's kind of my rhythm at the moment. Yeah, nice. How out of interest have you guys adapted like any of your programs? Well, what, what has the impact been of COVID? Because I imagine 
you know, on one side, I suppose you have the content and also the type of people applying, like what have, you know, what stresses or influences have you had on that, if, if any, I suppose. Well, uh, every single campus is closed down. So that's, uh, right, yeah. uh, yeah, that's, so that, that's one. one. Uh, yeah, it's actually been a massive shift. Um, it's been, and it's actually the, the general, general experience, general assembly experience and my personal yeah. experience have kind of mapped similarly in that, you know, there's kind of initially when it happened, a lot of stuff got canceled or put on hold, mm. you know, whole courses were canceled, like entire projects yeah. for me were canceled. Um, yeah. Like last week when Rob and I caught up, I mean, I told him, I think I was supposed to be in Oslo uh, delivering, you know, uh, you know, working with a, with a publishing company there and that got canceled or pushed back at least. So yeah. simultaneously there's been, okay, everything you have planned for the rest of the year is either canceled, delayed, or yeah. somehow brought online. Um, yeah. But then simultaneously, there's this, you know, really promising and positive undercurrent where um, there's, there's other opportunities that come up, right? So, yeah. you know, both myself, I think, and GA as an organization are fairly well positioned to mm -hmm. you know we're, we're tech savvy that's what we do uh yeah. um we you know our fair ga was already teaching online before that so as you know they yes. had that that vertical so i think that like it's uh you know a, it's it's disruptive but there's a lot of we're, we're still kind of well positioned i think moving forward yeah i mean um, the, i suppose the core product doesn't change that much no. I mean, just one thing I was, I was hinting at, you know, for example, so, I mean, you're completely right about clearing the calendar as well. So, you know, for example, that we will launch this, this product MBA program recently. So we're doing some of the first cohort of that. And um, one thing that became very obvious to me that's not taught looking at sort of like more business and product leadership side is things like dealing with adversity and agile in the true sense of the word, right? So really being able to actually like, pivot quite considerably you know right. rather than just saying agile equals like us organizing our tickets effectively and like getting more more features done and yeah. that um you know it's, it's something that i've sort of learned from entrepreneurship just from from practice and, and doing it is that these sort of really key skills um such as you know how do you deal with uncertainty how do you uh navigate uncertainty these kinds of things are not taught in traditional programs yeah. For, you know, my, my experience personally is that these things are absolutely essential because you can learn the theory, you know, you could have done two traditional MBAs in whatever, best universities in the world, but fundamentally, if you then take all of that nice theory, put it into practice and you sort of panic and, and you know, get overwhelmed by things, then it's in a way a waste of the time, a waste of time. Uh, and I think particularly at this, you know, at this moment, I think it's such a, a really important topic to bring in to, to any education program. I think also there's quite a lot of evidence coming out, like Adam Grant from Wharton School of Business, mm -hmm. that you know he points out a lot of our hiring is obviously focused on sort of like what specific manage uh, measurable skills you have. You know how proficient are you with Adobe, whatever sketch, rather than actually looking at like character traits, like how have, you know how have you shown you've overcome challenges, etc. In the past. So I'd be yeah. interested to, yeah, to see how sort of you guys bring that into education at maybe at some point. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, um, you know, those are hard things to measure, right? Like yeah. how you respond yeah. to crises, because yeah. a lot of times you don't know till it happens. Right. I think, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know how they're going to react in a traumatic or stressful situation until it happens. And I think it's the same for organizations, right? Um, yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. Internalizing kind of agile principles, like going, you know, going to the agile manifesto, like the original site that was thrown up, you know, back in 2001 or whenever it was, and actually reflecting on the fundamental first principles and yeah. saying, how can we apply these as opposed to just saying, you know, oh, you know, we we've nailed our sprint planning meetings and I've yeah, got the, right. I've got the agile t-shirt, you know, I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, how do you internalize those principles to make the most of the situation? Cause yeah, I mean, historically, if you look back, I mean, tons of companies um, were ob obviously perished during crisis and yeah. you know, there's obviously tons of challenges for individuals, 
but a lot of new inventions and new products and you know new, new companies came out of difficult well, times. Well, big. I mean, it was there were like Airbnb, I think Netflix, some other one of the other Facebook. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight was sort of when a lot of these guys took off. But yeah, on, on that maybe Rob, I'd be interested because I know you have obviously recently transitioned sort of employment to running your own business with Leap. How have you found? We're both talking, we both sort of launched our businesses at the beginning of this year and said, possibly the worst time, but could be an advantage as well. How have you could found be the best that? time? Who knows? Exactly. I think it could, how, yeah, how, it might actually be as well. Yeah. <laughs> how have you found that transition though, sort of coming into this, like, very, you know, you're suddenly in this very uncertain space, right? Where no one's sort of telling you where to go and you have to sort of work it out along the way. Yeah, I mean, it, for me, it's like a really interesting time anyway, because um, I just feel like I always just have so much to do all of the time because like the, the buck kind of stops with me. So yeah. essentially, if it doesn't get done, then that yeah, could have quite serious <laughs> ramifications. Yeah. Um, but generally speaking, like I, I you know, I've, I'm, I'm pretty structured anyway, but I've had to become yeah. like, way more structured in and like, especially as well, like I have, you know, Balan working with me as well. Yeah. Who's my prototyper, and you know, if anything, I've had to had I've had to have kind of more process than I probably ever imagined that I would have, just to make yeah. his life a little bit easier as well. But with yeah. regards to kind of navigating kind of the waters of you know finding new clients and kind of nurturing new relationships, then you know, essentially, I have to just prioritize that because that is mm -hmm. you know without me doing that, then obviously you know then leap won't survive. So. Yeah. It's kind of quite an adjustment, I have to say. I mean, but it's kind of like, it's just a responsibility to kind of like give it its best shot and to mm -hmm. kind of make sure that um, it literally, um, you know, I can, you know, I try and plan my days, my, my hours, my days, my weeks as much as possible. Um, but I still feel at the end of the day, I, I could do with a 48 hour day. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, just yeah, one yeah. of those things. But I, I suppose also it's a little, I mean, it's a little bit easier in having coming from a design sprint background and then sort of having a similar product, obviously it's your own business, but I suppose you're not pivoting the product so much. It's more, you know, what's the approach with, you know, we're talking about how do we approach people in COVID as opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, January, 2020. Yeah. I, I mean, suppose it's not sort of radical. Pivot. Yeah. There is, um, there is definitely um, a pivot that's needed and I feel kind of lucky that leap can be kind of flexible and kind of what, our core kind of product offering will be anyway essentially yeah. it will be sprints but you know i'm actually already talking about just having actual kind of like design kind of strategy engagements as well yeah, yeah and just being able to be flexible to kind of just listen to the client and kind of find yeah. out what they need like and i've always been like i mean don't get me wrong i spent the last three years running sprints for some of the best companies in the world but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only thing that they need to help yeah. them at that period in time yeah, yeah. And also what, what I'm finding also as well at the moment is that companies just, you know, they just need good design and good strategy mm. work to kind of make their products. Um, well, I suppose more, more than ever, right? Because we, you know, this is something I bang on about in all of my marketing stuff and in the, in the, the product MBA is that ultimately, particularly at the moment, right, products need to show, you know, we, we sort of help product managers get towards the product excellency, but they need to be showing that, okay, whatever product you're managing is delivering, Either, you know, it's covering its costs, right? It's covering, delivering enough revenue so that it covers its costs. Um, and ult or ultimately delivering quite clear, tangible value for the business. You know, if it's not delivering revenue, where, how, how do we show that that is, uh, for example, supporting retention, which ultimately delivers revenue to the company in some way? And I think there's sort of these questions are coming up in companies that got away with being a little bit flabby and, you know, not quite knowing what's going on in design and product and being sort of happy to just sort of leave it over here, not worry too much about it. Um, I think now where budgets are being cut, you know, those questions are starting to be asked. So I, for example, think it's going to be a great year for good, good product managers because they are needed. And I think people that have just, you know, as Austin said, the guys that are just focused on like velocity and like organizing sprints effectively and sort of keeping their Jira nice and tidy, ultimately that doesn't deliver results for the business. Um, so we're going to see people needing to step up or where they can't step up for really good product managers or, you know, product strategists, product designers like yourself coming in and sort of filling that gap. Cutting the bullshit. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would, to be honest, yeah, I think this is a great time for individuals and companies to get in like spiritual, emotional, and financial fighting shape. You know, like yeah, this exactly, is exactly exactly this is yeah. like this is the this is the Rocky montage. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, where we're all kind of um, either going through the gauntlet, but we're going to come out the other side. You know, ready to face Drago. Oh my God! Yeah. I mean, one thing, exactly, exactly, there's a phrase that really sticks with me, you know, call, calling it sort of like, this, this is our Everest in terms of, I think for a lot of people, particularly, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit younger than Rob, so I was still in university during the 2008 recession. But, um, you know, for a lot of our, my generation, this is the first like challenge we had. The economy since then, if you're in tech, obviously I'm not talking about everyone. Yeah, it's been it's been easy to like walk into jobs. Um, you don't really need much experience because nobody really knows what like product design is. Nobody really knows what product management is in many companies. So it's been like a pretty easy ride. And I think now is the first time on a sort of personal level that people are dealing with, you know, questions like okay, you know, purpose and threat and all of these things, and also difficulty suddenly like finding a job or differentiating ourselves. And then as a business, it's also like we have to be. You know, we're not, it's, it's no longer about like getting agile coaches in and sort of, you know, getting our sprints organized, as we said, it's, and then you, it's not enough now, like you have to deliver results. Yeah. And it's a completely right. Yeah. It's like putting people through their paces. So I think is a really, you know, I think it's a real positive. It causes obviously short term stress. And, you know, I can't imagine what it's like being fully out of a job and sort of not seeing where to go next with that. But I think, you know, generally there's a lot of benefits of this as a sort of stress test, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, Rob and I discussed, uh, I think last week in a conversation, how we both feel bizarrely optimistic despite the kind of chaos and noise around us. And I don't know if that's justified. I don't know if it's a psychological trick. Like I know the, you know, the, you know during the, the bombing of London in World War II, like they, they anticipated people to have like yeah, severe yeah. psychological stress and they set up like, you know, I'm going to mess up this, this story. So don't fact check me, but they set up like, uh, they set up like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll let you tell the story. But I mean, but basically they anticipate a lot of like psychological shock, but bizarrely, even though bombs were falling and there was a lot of risk, like people kind of went about their day and felt, personally relatively optimistic at least uh from you know the, the small case study that i read mm -hmm. and you know as well as well like i think that um uh you know i i, I wonder if it's that or if it's you know my american overconfidence <laughs> just in general mm -hmm. uh but there, there i do feel like there's some sort of positive undercurrent i don't know rob like you maybe you have something to add on that yeah I, know I don't know i mean i'm a pretty optimistic person anyway so um yeah. i like i i remember losing my whole complete luggage when i was flying over to the states a couple of years ago and it was i would just moved to berlin and i was living out of that suitcase and like yeah. people were saying to me at the time like D like dude like why are you not stressed i was like look you know you can't get stressed about these things it's just like yeah. whatever so i'm a yeah. pretty optimistic person but i would say kind of going back to the relevance of today I think, you know, and I don't mean this in a kind of really sadistic way, but I think it's going to be a leveler. Like whatever is happening now is going to be a leveler for everybody. And like that includes LEAP as well. Like we're having to kind of really aggressively kind of like stance ourselves now in the market with everything that's happening. But I think actually there are always going to be good things to come out of something like this because it really, like, you know, going back to the topic of the conversation at the very beginning, it really makes people kind of self-evaluate and you, you know, it kind of like, it just cuts a lot of the shit that's happening yeah. at the moment and makes yeah, yeah. it completely relevant. And I think if you're positioned in a way so that you are relevant and people need your services and they need your skills, I don't think there's anything to worry about. And I think that's, I know I have such a firm belief in that offering with Leap. That's why I'm not really worried. Do I have sleepless nights every once in a while? Of course I do. But like, I think generally speaking, um, if I can survive this year, and I think Leap will be around for many, many years to come. So um, I think, yeah, actually, if anything, I'm kind of, it's really upping my game on kind of yeah. making my offering relevant for those people right now. Um, yeah, I, I thought, sorry, on, exact, on that point as well, from my side, exactly the same thing, because like we, Dustin, to give you a bit of background, like I started Product Mastery beginning of this year, sort of seeing a problem in the, in the product management space of lack of training, lack of mentorship, something there. Sort of like pivoting ideas, seeing whether we could build a digital tool, trying something else, 
even doing sort of like in-person workshops, that kind of thing. And I think actually with COVID, it, it honed my mind so well in saying, yeah, okay, I've been thinking about doing this sort of product MBA program for a while. Like I published a book on product last year. So I've had these themes in my head. I think up until, you know, six weeks ago, I was, you know, trying to go back and forth because there wasn't any sort of urgency and stress. And then it, I think after a couple of weeks of sort of not knowing quite what to do and pivoting quite quickly with a few ideas, it's just absolutely focused my mind on that. You know, we're, we're a week into that program now, have like 30 really, really high level candidates in the program, like all super engaged. So it's going really well. And I'm not sure I would have ever taken the leap with that, uh, to use <laughs> your, your company, Rob, uh, taking the leap with saying, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to dedicate getting this program done like 10 weeks, make it really good, do it for free for the first cohort because it's going to set a very good foundation for business and future. And yeah. I really think without that, I wouldn't have done that. Because again, it's also very easy, you know, if you're seeing a couple of like consultancy freelance things come in, you're like, oh, why not? You know, it's, it's, it's hard to say no when there's sort of money on the table. Yeah. And I think now that I had a similar situation, I'm doing some like one consultancy gig now, a few hours a week, which luckily gives me a nice sort of minimum. But, um, you know, most stuff was just cut immediately. Yeah. And I think looking back in three months, it's going to be the best thing that has ever happened to me if, if we deliver with the MBA program and then obviously yeah. you're able to sell that in the future. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's, I think as you said, you, you can be optimistic if you are confident with your ability based in reality and also that you are trying things and you are also going back to question certain assumptions about, you know, what works, what doesn't work, and, you know, really revisiting like who is our, who is our target customer? Like what has changed? What is that transformation they're looking for? Because yeah. again, that might have changed rather than looking for promotion, for example, many people are looking at, yeah, maybe starting their own business or, um, you know, how do, we, how do I really quickly skill up to defend my job? So those people's mindset has obviously shifted massively. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. basically if you're truly agile in your own approach, and I think if we, you know, we all run sort of small businesses or, or self-run, then there's reason to be optimistic. I think the people that should worry and that are pessimistic, you know, people that have worked in the same company for 30 years, yeah. doing well, some very sort of specific thing that, yeah. that doesn't deliver much value. Because rightly so. Like, yeah. And that is why yeah, big I, companies have a lot of cash. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think as well, like a huge challenge, I mean, you know, and I mentioned earlier, it might be the best time to start a business. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows? What, if you're, if anyone's listening, if you're thinking of doing it, join the product MBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Second I, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, I mean, because I think a real challenge even is for a small business that maybe assumes some overhead during the good times, yeah. um, whether it's staff or, or whether it's, um, you know, office space or anything like that. Um, and if you can't, you know, fully access your capital, like if you can't use the office, for example, and you know, that's no. a line item on your budget, like, I think, mm. you know, that's going to be a huge challenge. Um, and just out of curiosity, like what, what would you say both of y'all have done as a result of this situation to get into like fighting shape? Like, I mean, you, you've kind of alluded to it. Like you mentioned, you changed tack, you kind of said no to some of the kind of non-core consulting type stuff. Um, mm. and Rob, you mentioned like increased focus. So like what, how would, how have y'all gotten into like fighting shape, I guess, when it comes to your business? Yeah. I mean, I guess, um, I guess subconsciously, I guess when everything happened in kind of like January, February this year, it actually just forced me to just take a step back and rethink like everything. And I want to be like explicitly clear here. It's not rethink like what, whether I should have started leave. That was never a question, but as in to just rethink what my year actually is going to look like mm -hmm. and to kind of address those kind of pain points of like okay how do i get clients how do i get started do i hire people all this stuff it, it forced me to rethink everything and actually i'm kind of grateful for this right now moment because it's actually kind of giving me some serious considerations as to kind of how i want to run leap in the future i had these aspirations of you know having office space or going to co-working space or hiring like a ton of people and like really ramping up because like my first two months of this year were insane like the some of the like if i kind of stayed committed to those kind of engagements before and like if covid hadn't happened that would have happened for sure 
and it would have accelerated my trajectory into kind of like the market like exponentially but actually what's happening now is it's kind of really forcing me to think about okay where do, where do I want to take it right now and where do I want it to be you know in a couple of years time and it's way more um, it's way more kind of virtual if that makes sense so I'm kind of grateful for that kind of moment to kind of like I think otherwise I would have just been on this treadmill and just trying to keep up with it but it's for me it's now it's really kind of it's made me think about okay you know if I have five sprints this year that would be amazing like I don't need to have a sprint every month so for me it's kind of like yeah this is a good state of mind to be in and I'm now happy with the pace of where everything's going yeah, yeah got, the question I kind of I kind of rambled a little bit there actually but no, it does I think it's I mean it's similar to, I've got the cost cutting is one of my, so I've got three points. I think one is really valuable for anyone, sort of a framework to use. The first one's cost cutting. So one thing that I did last year, when that sort of lots of money was coming through consultancy is just tuck that away, like keep it in the business, keep costs down. You know, if I'm doing any business travel, like I'm on Ryanair, easy jet. Like I'm not, I'm not spending any unnecessary. So I, because of that, it's given me runway for this year to, to basically a low breathing room. Second one, I think is focused from my side, sort of it's, you know, I'm a, a, a one-person business. I've got someone helping out on the side, but it's essentially a one-person business. So I think by, it, it focuses you by saying, you know, there's no like job to fall back on. There's no sort of like easy freelance money. It's like I've got to get, you know, shit done and high level shit done. I think the third one that I would, is a really, really effective framework to use is looking at sort of second and third order consequences. So for example, when, COVID sort of struck. One thing that I observed is a lot of people sort of wide-eyed, going like, shit, you know, we, just, we need to solve COVID now. And, you know, I can see business owners in tech worrying about it. It's like, you can't, like, you know, unless you're a virologist or like, you know, tapped into WHO, like, you, yes, you can try and help with small things, right? So offering support, you know, to friends, family, etc. But you're not going to solve this thing. So instead, be helpful and look at the second, third order points, i.e., for example, okay, when we knew that a recession is coming, what are the consequences of a recession? Things like higher unemployment, new businesses starting. What's, what are the consequences, third order, of higher unemployment? People needing to skill up really, really quickly and really differentiate themselves and some of those people wanting to start a business. So I sort of took a pause as Rob did and said, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to just panic and try and you know, solve something right now, but say what comes next? So the logic with the product MBA um, and doing it for free is simply targeting high level people that are out of employment through no fault of their own, right? Just through being furloughed, get them into the six week program, deliver results with the program. Once that's done, once we're out of quarantine and, and you know, there's a recession, but there's some stability and people are looking to the future, then we, we should be, this is my big assumption, the big bet we're placing, we should be really well placed for post quarantine which we're already starting to come out of in, in, you know, in four weeks for us. That's where we'll be at. So I think if anyone is in business, it's easier, obviously, if you're small and really agile, but just not having this sort of knee-jerk reaction and you know, wide-eyed rabbit in the headlights, but just taking a step back and sort of seeing, okay, what are the kinds of knock-on effects that are going to be happening in the future? I like that thought process. I'm going to... Yeah, same. I'm, I'm actually going to... I mean, I think I naturally you know, default to try to no. control the things that I can control and, you know, get finding a vaccine is out of my control. Um, exactly. I mean, <laughs> so, that, 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 sorry, that but I, to, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I, but I was going to say, I like that framework. I, I want to like formally, you know, think about what are the second and third order consequences. Yeah, that Ray, was, I mean, Ray, that Ray Dalio, who's I think the second most successful investor ever, that sort of thing he, he uses. He's my go-to guy on, on the economy as well. So I'd, I'd recommend listening to him. I mean, that, that also touches upon a really interesting point, Austin, that you talked about earlier, which, you know, this topic of optimism. So everyone I know that's optimistic, worries about things under their control, doesn't worry about things out of their control. Uh, and I think, it, I think they're optimistic because there's a certain behavior that that triggers, right? I think when you, you, know, you worry about everything out of your control, you can throw your hands up and just go like, oh, the world's ending anyway, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna like watch Netflix for three months and you follow the wine every night. And uh, I think, you know, when you, when you go, well, actually, you know what, there are some things I can control. It sort of, you know, builds momentum and gets you moving forward. Yeah, this, um, there's been an interesting discussion on LinkedIn and other areas that, I, I, that I'd be interested to hear y'all's uh, thoughts on. And it, it's related to what you're saying, so I'm not going completely in a different direction. But there's kind of the, 
the two ends of the spectrum. Some people that are like, you know, like, how are you going to use this lockdown? Like hustle, 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 kind yeah, of the yeah, Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk side. And then the, and I'm not putting pros or cons on either side. I'm just, you know, saying what I see out there. And then there are other people that are like, this is stressful. Like this hustle culture is, you know, damaging to people's psyche. Like if they need to spend three months Netflixing and to, to mm. digest the current situation, then like let them without this kind of hustle shame. Uh, and, you know, I'm actually, I'm personally, you know, pretty much only interact with my family. I listen to some podcasts, but I've, I don't read the news. So I've, and I don't, I'm not that active on social. So I don't, I'm not actually privy to the latest iteration of that discussion. And I don't have like a moral uh, position on it. Um, but what, I mean, what, what do y'all think? Or have you seen that out there? Or is that just popping up? Yeah, in my yeah. I, I do a lot of marketing on LinkedIn. I mean, I think, I mean, my view of it, I think is, it's a tough one, right? Because it sort of depends on the person, right? I think you, you should be, I think there's a, there's, there's, there's a fact, right? There's a simple fact in life, particularly at the moment, that's very acute, which is if you are not like skilling up, or if you are not skilled up or differentiated, then you are at the whim of the markets and at the whim of these kinds of things. So I think it's too easy to sort of like, you know, hide under the cover and say, I'm just going to wait for a year when things come back to normal. Like that's fine if you do that, but be aware that that's the decision you are making. Mm. I think that's really, really important. And I think on the other hand, it's very important to say look, for people that do want to, you know, take advantage of this, like the guys we have in the, the product MBA at the moment, here's, here's an avenue for you. Like you don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, like here's an avenue that you can take and we're going to help you sort of do that. So yeah, I don't think it's helpful shaming people. I don't think that's the intention of, of anyone doing it. Yeah. But I think it's more that for those people that do want to take action, like here's, you know, somebody, here's an offer that you can, you can follow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think, it, I mean, you, the whole, it depends. I know it's an unsatisfying answer, but I think that's a hundred percent the answer, right? Like yeah. if you, if you have the, the personal and professional situation where you can push forward and you have like a lane that you can, mm. you know, put the pedal to yeah. the metal and go for it. And that's what you yeah. feel like doing, go, you know, Exactly. Great. If other people need to take a break, then well, take a break. You don't need to go. You don't need to go like a hundred or zero. Right. You know, like me and my girlfriend are doing like a sort of drawing class in the evenings now and again. No, oh, that's fine. This is something that's like re vaguely helpful with my like design work. But it's not. Um, you know, I'm not just doing that. But you know, you don't need to just like do nothing or obsess over your career. I think there's a a middle ground. This way, Rob. What's your What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, Y yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> caught me off on the hop there. Actually, um, can I? Can I? Can I? Sorry, I'm going to ask you to just to rephrase the last no, bit no, because it's a quite a long no. question. So I don't really want to long-windedly <laughs> answer it again. <laughs> I think basically there's this, this, as Austin was saying, there's this movement of well, there's two sides of the equation, right? There's a lot of people saying like you should. This is a great chance to push on, like you know, learn skills you haven't thought of before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The other side, it's fine to you know, take some time for yourself. Do Netflix and yeah, exactly. Our art to equals, it depends on the person. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, it depends, I guess, what your circumstances are as well. Like if you're able to kind of just take this opportunity to just um, have more time, like I know people already uh, in this exact example where, you know, they're either on furlough or whether they are, um, mm. sorry, well, that word a few weeks ago as well. Um, but um, I think, um, some people automatically, I, I net, for within, within my network, I know some people have had to kind of work to very accelerated time pressure and they probably just need this time to just recharge their batteries. So yeah, yeah. I don't really, like if people need to spend a week watching Netflix series, I think then so be it. Because I think it's always been my mantra that like you have to have a really strong balance between like work and like yeah. what you do. And it, it makes you the designer that you are if you have amazing downtime and you're able to yeah. be and be inspired mm -hmm. by the things that you want to be. But equally, you know, like um I at the moment now like wish I had an extra, you know, few hours a day to read all the books that I want to read. So I would just say take each day as it comes and just do do the, the 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 things that you really are important to you. And if it means you need to go and sit on the banks of the spree and drink a beer, 
then do it because I think you know it will make doing you that, doing that later. Exactly, you bet. <laughs> <Three hours. laughs> um, but equally, yeah, I would say you know now is probably a really good time. Um, and actually, for you guys, and really pertinent, of course, to, for everything that you stand for, is to, like to just knowledge up. Like this is now yeah. the best time. Like uh, yeah. so, yeah, I would definitely recommend doing that as well. There's a, I mean, there's, there's, I think there's all, I mean, there's also a really interesting element to it where there are people that are active for the sake of being active. Right. So it's, it's as some people distract themselves with Netflix, yeah. other people will distract themselves with like doing a programming course, you know, and, and maybe that, you know, it's nothing to do with what they do for their day to day job or, you know, it's just, it's just this thing that I can yeah. do and it's going to keep me busy. So I don't think that's very helpful either. Uh, so I think if you, I mean, this, for example, like with the product MBA, like we filtered people out, like we filtered about 30% of applicants out. Because you could tell some people like, you know, I'm just sort of doing the course because I have some time. This is going to be, you know, vaguely interesting and keep busy. That's not what they said, but you could get that impression underneath it. Yeah. And then, you know, we said to them like, this is just not going to be, this is really hands-on. Uh, like you're literally reaching out to people week one, starting to build a business within like two, three weeks. So we sort of push those people out. And I suspect they go to Udemy and do some sort of random course. Which again, it's, it's fine. Like I think that's probably better than doing Netflix, but it's not a solution, right? It's not something, yeah. you know, I think it's probably more productive if you did something like sitting in silence for 10 minutes a day or just meditating, going for a walk, like that kind of space. Yeah. So as you said, just sort of, you know, see, what, okay, take a step back and see, okay, what's the bigger picture? Where do I fit into that bigger picture as well? Yeah. A, a reflection period of time, let's just say, exactly. is probably the best yeah. way of, of looking at this period of time now. For sure. When you're not building yeah. a your company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mistake, you know, just uh, motion for moving forward, right? Um, exactly. I, yeah, I that's did, a good thing. And, and I think that one of the, the, you know, one of the benefits of this great pause is like the option to, to reflect you know, if that's what you feel like doing. And again, I'm kind of like Rob at the moment where somehow I feel busier than ever. And I'm not sure if that's like the busy body inside of me. And it, you know, if, if I'm actually every once in a while, I have to sense check whether that's motion or if that's progress, you know, um, cause do I, you, I do. Do you, have, do you guys ahead. have a process for like eliminating things from your yeah, I, it's so funny because some people say, oh, like I have a list of things to do and, you know, like I can't, and I kind of do, but I'm actually surrounded by post-it notes at the moment. And this is a funny one, look. <laughs> yeah. it's I Question mark? Out. That's today. Well, you, can, you can change that to an exclamation point. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So but like, um, yeah, like I, I mean, to-do lists are a great example because I think um, for me, it's like, I, I, my brain is already like, has a, like a massive amount of to do's in it already. And sometimes it helps just to write it down. But actually I think to do. Oh, wait, so no, so you don't, you don't need to do this. No, um, because I think they just become kind of void and pointless over a period of time because you, you can have a priority for one day and then the next day it's completely blown out the water because you have other tasks. Like the things I, I oh, depend, yeah, it depends on the task. So. Yeah, I know exactly. Right. You're, you're right. I'm probably going to be a bit controversial here as well, but I don't care. But like, I'm, I mean, I'm if, anything is, with my list. If, if anything is really, really important, then I put it on the kind of shelf right in front of me because that's something like, especially if it's needed for like in a few days' time. But I always have this list of ongoing things like, you know, I have my website to do, I have like social media content strategy to do, I have design work to do. Like, by default, those things fall into a natural order anyway because of the, the order in which things happen. Like for example, like earlier we were talking about client engagement. Like yeah. I have to just, that automatically just means whatever list of priorities I've had before, it means I have to respond to that email in order to kind of make sure that that engagement happens. Yeah. So they're kind of, for me, it's, they're a little bit kind of, yeah, I mean, if it, if it helps. Well, you, I mean, what, right? well, I mean, one thing I was hinting at is, I'll show you what, I, I, I don't know if you can see my screen share. I've hidden the personal part of my journal, but so I use Bear for like just full journal and, um, yeah. to, but what I do every, I've done this for like five years. The first thing on my list is the most important. Like the, if, if I get one thing done today, it, it's, yeah. it could be that thing. If I get that yeah. done, everything else is secondary, but I'll cut stuff off my list as well. Like this is sort of an optional thing I need to do. Like if I don't get it done at the end of the day, I'm just going to cut it because it's not so worth taking. It's not so worth taking to next week. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you, that was my question. You wouldn't cut it and put it in on the next day and just keep. I would if it was going to be important, but I would do something like if I was like, you know, I sort of want to do this at some point. I'll just put it here. Yeah. If at some point I'm like, you know what? Because also in a way it's quite good because it. Sorry, I need to unscreen share. In a way, by by putting the non-important stuff always at the bottom and pushing it back. So you get to like three days later and you're like, you know what, fuck it. Nothing bad is going to happen if this doesn't get done. I'll just delete it. Yeah. It's really, it's really uh, like liberating. The, the most... to do, I think to-do lists can be terrible if yeah. you just have this massive list. I think that's bad because then you, you, you sort of go through a default. It's like whatever's at the top, which could be a completely random thing. You just get through yeah. first. Which and if not, you don't do yeah, them, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, if you don't and you do stress them, out and you start yeah, stressing it's out psychologically about, so. bad. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I try and really, I groom, I groom it meticulously. Like I never start a day without <laughs> defining like the one. Thing. No, it sounds really ridiculous, but it's just it's such an ingrained habit now. It, basically, it, I mean, yeah. I'm very relaxed about work yeah. if, if you just have that order. Already. <laughs> You're a groomer, basically. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Definitely very, very uh, OCD. <laughs> I, I'm grateful for seeing your list because I never knew that you were into basketball and this really changes everything. I'm playing tomorrow, 9 a.m. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, we, need to, we need to play, like, shoot some hoops together. Yeah, I don't actually have that. I'm using a friend's basketball. But... No, no, you, you're more than welcome to join. So also, you... how, about, how about you with your, your sorry, time? How do you find time management at the moment? You said you're pretty busy. I thought you were going to ask about my basketball skills. Yeah, that's um, what I thought you were going to ask. Which, yeah, which I was like, uh, but, uh, but that was a good, uh, good segue. So we're back. Uh, no, I, you know, it's funny because I have all these, um, these ways to prioritize tasks and, you know, plan what we're working on when I work with teams and when I work on, you know, product design and with product teams. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to my own life, it's, it's fairly <laughs> willy nilly. Like I, I have, I just have one of these. And every single day I write like, uh, I write like professional stuff on the left and personal stuff on the right. And I just oh, like cool. check it off, but it's just, it's a, uh, for everyone who can't see that, I just, it's one of the rectangle posts. but, um, and I've tried different things. Like I use notion, but I find that like, I like having something physical and tactile, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, like a post-it, but, um, Generally you guys, speaking, yeah, you guys are very, you're both professional designers, right? As well, so you like, yeah, yeah. So, like you the know, we have, stuff, yeah. we have the obligatory posted around at any given time. But the, uh, I would say, though, that the one thing that I struggle at is, you know, the, the I think there's like the two by two matrix of like urgent, important, uh, yeah. you know. And so, like, I think the non-urgent but important things tend to get, deprioritize too often in favor of the urgent mm, important yeah, yeah, things yeah. and, and I mean, so i it, think that yeah that's a challenge just, for me in my like personal business it's life, also with the, i know. think the problem with the to-do list as well is, is it it's nicer obviously ticking stuff off so there's a danger you push these sort of big things down but you know, that's, that's a good tactic that I use, is, is i'll just if it's the most important thing it's always going to be first even if it's like it takes two minutes to do or yeah. four hours or like two days um I find if you do that, then all the other stuff sort of clicks into place. Yeah. I like that you had your Q1, like your more high level goals, like just directly beneath it in view. Um, that was nice. I mean, I've played around with various things in Notion, but I feel like often it's over engineered and then I have a hard time keeping up with it. Mm. But, but actually, yeah, no, to no. name check uh, um, Jake Knapp, I know that like I read his Make Time book and they do, a, mm. they, they wrote a whole book about like, to, you know, <laughs> how to prioritize what to do with your time. And it's, it's pretty fascinating, but also one of the conclusions is that it's so personal and yeah. like yeah. everyone ends up doing kind of a lo-fi version of the, their idea I think the, the principle, right? Cause I, so I read the, the introduction, I sort of followed that blog. I think the principle is there actually across, there's a thread across like lots of effective people that I read, which is, I'm not putting myself in that bubble by the way, but that group but, uh, of, um, you know, do it like choose one thing do it first in the day that's generally a sort of a, a good rule of thumb to follow everything yeah. else is sort of you know flowers you know what's the word sort of um extras around the edges right it's mm -hmm. a decoration i think if you do that then you you know you're, you're going to be moving towards your long-term goals also you're going to be just getting the, the getting the stuff done i think also really importantly as we talked about the sort of work life balance again like I think, I think particularly as an entrepreneur, like finishing your day and feeling like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm done. I can chill. It's so important. 
you know, if you feel like you've got this massive, obviously it happens sometimes, but if you feel like you've got this massive list of things to do and you haven't done it and you're going, falling behind, you know, you're just sort of shooting yourself in the foot in a way because you're just, you know, you're going to sleep worse. You're not going to be able to focus properly. You feel a little bit overwhelmed and ultimately you're not going to, you know, enjoy your, your, your life generally if you're in that state all the time. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I mean, luckily, I like I just had a kid a month ago, and it's my second. And um, my kids, actually, especially young ones, I guess I don't have any experience with older ones, obviously. So, uh, but um, it's a forced break. Like I have to turn off in uh, the yeah. evenings because you know, like they're, you know, she's like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to play or something like that, or you know, it's dinner time or something. So I, I'm actually really thankful for those forced breaks because otherwise, yeah. I think I'd drive myself nuts with my to-do list uh, yeah. i mean you know, i suppose you I, I imagine you just realize that what's really important is not your work but but your kids i suppose in this situation yeah i mean yeah they i mean they definitely come first but you know but works works definitely important too like i, I love yeah. my work and like i mean i it's obvious from this conversation that y'all do too so it's like it's just a, it's a balancing act right yeah yeah, yeah. awesome um i suppose it's a good time to wrap up i think rob and i've got Cause and tell me any other any other topics you want to cover? I think this is the first of many. I I just yeah, I, 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 Austin, I just love li listening to your kind of theory on everything to do with you know, design and life, and you have you're full of so much wisdom and quotes. I love it. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh. I sorry, I forgot. I was going to write down your the quote you said is now a quote by the way on um sorry what is it motion without something doesn't make sense i can't remember i I'm guess don't, mis don't mistake motion for progress uh yeah. maybe that was it I, I listened to a lot of podcasts so i i may like accidentally be quoting someone else but i, no, I can't fine. attribute I think, it because i don't know um <laughs> so i think we all do that in some way yeah oh, well so yeah, that, I, that was an absolute pleasure really, really definitely you know I, i'd be really happy to do this like again um it's really cool to connect with people to be honest because you know I, I'm quite literally operating in a vacuum. Well, not literally, but like I'm, I'm, I'm at home. You know, I don't get a lot of uh, opportunities to bounce ideas and get out of my own head. So, um, yeah. anytime you wanna, you wanna catch up for a recorded or uh, you know offline chat, just give me a shout. Yeah. yeah. Well, I might. Yeah, I might take you up on that for the product MBA. Actually, we're bringing in uh, Rob's coming in actually in two weeks to do a, a talk. So I might uh, reach out to you in a couple of weeks on that. Sounds great. I know I'll definitely check it out by the way in the meantime. So nice one. Yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it a good email. Oh, you can visit my email address, which is productmastery.ca. Awesome. Uh anything else before we, we close up shop? No, just good job hosting, Henry. I've really enjoyed it. No, no, that was really, really fun. Really fun chat. And I will yeah, Rob, let me know if you want to play basketball. I'll seriously. Yeah, we definitely. Are, we, are, we are actually playing tomorrow. The question tomorrow. you need to ask is which pair of Jordans do you want me to play in? I've got um you can whatever you want. I've got this like shitty pair of fake Nikes I bought in Malaysia two <laughs> years ago. They've got, I mean, they've honestly, I, my girlfriend got really pissed off. They've got two like massive holes in the toe, like the, the front bits sort are of, like flattening around. I, yeah. just, I hate, I hate buying new clothes. Like I hate it. So out of principle until they fall apart, they are being used for basketball. Well, <laughs> well I'll, I'll, if you know, I won't join y'all for basketball. I'm not as tall as I look on Zoom. <laughs> um but if uh but if if y'all if y'all want to do ping pong later in the summer that's my sport so, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not that's right really cool as well actually yeah I'm that is enthusiastic. ping pong in berlin is like the i don't know it was a revelation when i moved here it's, there's just yeah, these yeah. ping pong oh, games yeah, everyone's, fantastic. everyone's out in neukon playing already yeah that's it not, that's not it. a german dude Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. And uh, enjoy the weekend. And if anyone has managed to listen this far into it, thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> yeah. There'll thank be you. Many, many more of these to follow. Cheers, guys. Awesome. Cheers. Bye-bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Ciao.